talking this video about why I do not use Emacs. Um, now, if you're an OG subscriber to this channel, you will know that literally two years ago, I did a video and sort of a video competition um, where I put out a video said, convince me to use Emacs, okay? And that's what I wanted people to do. I wanted, wanted them to submit tutorials and stuff like that. And people have been asking me about, you know, where's the update? Are you gonna use Emacs? Have you started using it? Uh, of course, if you watch my videos, you know I don't. Actually, maybe at this point, I should even explain what Emacs is because I am sure there are a lot of people who watch this channel who don't know. So maybe, maybe I should at least say what it is. So GNU Emacs is, uh, it was Richard, Richard Stallman who wrote it, but it is a, uh, uh, I guess it's improperly called a text editor. It used to be a text editor, but it was so extensible that basically you can do everything in this text editor. It is one program to rule them all. Um, it can send email, can, you can do web browsing, you can look at PDFs, you can do like people, when you use Emacs and you get into it, uh, Emacs becomes your operating system. And uh, everything else, you know, you might use Ubuntu or something like that, but that's really just your boot screen into getting into Emacs. Um, so that is the Emacs ideal. And a lot of people have, you know, Emacs has a lot of very famous features. One of the biggest ones is, of course, org mode and stuff like that. Uh, org mode, ah, it's sort of hard to explain, but it, it has some crazy interesting features. Um, it, I guess, I, I mean, it's one of those things, I, I guess it started out as a scheduling application or mode or something like that, but it can do all these crazy things in terms of like monitoring the time you use on things. It can like compile documents in weird way. I, I don't know, it just does everything, okay? So a lot of people ask me, now, now, first off, 95% of the people who do it ask it as if I don't know what Emacs is. Hey, there's this program called Emacs. Maybe you should check it out. Oh, you've heard of Emacs? Have you ever heard of org mode? It's really cool. You should try it out. Oh, you don't like Emacs bindings? Did you know you can use a Vim mode in Emacs? I don't know why people do this. Like, I'm sorry, I have the internet too. I have YouTube's recommended video section uh, too. I've seen all this stuff. I've seen all these videos. Um, anyway, when I put out this video two uh, years ago, um, what I wanted is people to put up tutorials that were sort of like tutorials on my channel where it's just like, you know, a couple of minutes, here's how you do this, here's how it's useful. But I wanted the equivalent in Emacs. I wanted people to show me things I could not do easily or as elegantly um, without Emacs. You know, I wanted to see that how Emacs does things better. Now, needless to say, I have not started using Emacs, okay? First off, now, I, this is going to sound like rambling. This is totally relevant to the actual question. But I, I want to talk about the what kind of things I got in that uh, video competition, okay? For example, there was a guy, um, I think his uh, YouTube, I don't know if he actually puts up videos anymore, but uh, he had a YouTube channel called Uncle Dave. And he, uh, like, he put out, like, you know, again, I said, like, oh, do, do a brief tutorial, a couple minutes about cool things you can do in Emacs. He did, like... Um, why I use Emacs part one, it was like 40 minutes. And of course there were, you know, he showed some cool stuff, but um, the thing about it, and I mean, I had used Emacs in the past. I had sort of tried to familiarize myself with it and I knew some of the features, but I guess not just from his videos, but other people as well. The pattern is extremely long videos, basically saying Emacs is a terrible choice if you just want to switch, like Emacs is good for tinkerers who want to learn like a totally new program and totally how to, I don't know, redo everything they already do, but in Emacs and I don't know, it's cool from the Emacs perspective. Um, but in terms of like actually getting uh, efficiency out of it, that is something that is sort of, you know, long time in the future if you're gonna switch to Emacs. Um, I'll just say that there's basically, of all the videos I watch, of all the things that people sent me, um, I basically saw nothing that I found in Emacs that was really impressing, uh, impressive, impressing. It didn't, it wasn't impressing me and it wasn't impressive either, um, or at least nothing too out of the ordinary. Um, and I guess even more than that, I, as I started to think about really what this channel is about, uh, this channel is about, man, that sounds, sounds so stupid. Really, my experience in using a computer, let me explain it. Again, this sounds like rambling, but this is answering the question, okay? Um, when I started familiarizing myself with a Linux operating system or a Unix-like operating system, it really went like this. And I think this is how it usually goes. You look at GUI applications, 
um, and you look at minimalist alternatives to them. And when you learn to use a minimalist alternative, you sort of get closer to how the system actually works. You're getting lower level as you learn how to use a system. And that's, that's something really nice because if you have a better, you know, as you familiarize yourself with the system and you have a better lower level knowledge of it, you realize all these crazy things you can do with it just by having an intimate knowledge of it. Okay, that's the only way I can describe it. So for me, learning, like becoming good at computers, I mean, to simplify things, is more about stripping away the unnecessary cruft and looking at core essentials, okay? Now my perspective on Emacs, now I'm gonna say Emacs might be perfect for you and other people, it might even be good for me in an alternate universe. But from my perspective now, if I were to start using Emacs, Emacs would be like, you know, I've been learning about this, uh, a Unix-based operating system by stripping away things and getting at core principles. Using Emacs would be like plopping this enormous redundant mess on top and saying, now this is your operating system. Now, you know, all the stuff you learned about the principles of, uh, you know, Unix-based operating systems and text streams and pipes and all that stuff. Although, of course, um, Emacs Lisp still has stuff like that. I mean, it has its own internal logic that can be very elegant. Um, it's sort of, it seems a little like I, I, I'm making unprogress, you know, I'm going backwards, right? Where, it, where again, you know, I don't really find anything about Emacs, although there are cool features. Oh, wow, look at the cool looking things you can do in org mode. None of that is cool enough for me to, uh, first off, I'm not, well, actually, I'm not a big fan of cool things. I don't do things just because they're like, wow, they're interesting or something like that. Um, like, I don't, the org mode, of course, which does a bunch of scheduling and stuff like that, that is just not something I do with a computer. Like, I, I don't have a need for that. Um, it's interesting it can do that. But it's one of those things where it's just like, okay, um, I mean, of course, org mode does more than that. Of course, I, I always have to make caveats here because people will say, oh, actually, it does more than that. Well, actually, blah, blah, blah. Yes, yes, I know. Um, but again, from my perspective, using Emacs is sort of like making things, like putting an extra layer of complexity over my system, uh, which I now know very well. And I would just have to relearn that, and I might, I might even get something out of, of learning Emacs, but it just seems like a lot of uh, redundant learning. Now notice what I'm not doing here. Uh, I don't know, it's probably too late in the video for people to even notice, but uh, I'm not knocking Emacs. I'm not saying it's a waste of time. I'm not saying any of that kind of stuff, uh, because I know that Emacs can, you know, if you get into Emacs, it can be like an, a super productive uh, workflow and stuff like that. Um, so like I'm not, I'm never gonna knock that any more than I'm gonna knock familiarizing yourself with the Unix based operating system. Um, I guess I, I I guess I would be more comfortable with Emacs if it were actually just a, an installable operating system with that you didn't I mean you didn't have to install some um, like you just booted into Emacs you know what I mean I would feel like oh okay it's just a different operating system that's sort of how I really look at it I guess and that's how I think it should be looked at. So I, I, I guess the question then is, should I switch my operating system from Unix to Emacs? I'm not convinced there's any, I mean, I, again, I might learn stuff uh, about the operating system, but I don't know how much generalizable um, uh, stuff I can get out of that that's actually gonna be useful. So anyway, in general, hopefully that explains why I'm not, uh, I, I don't use Emacs. Again, um, it's something, if you have a lot of time, you're just wasting, I guess, and you, might be interested in Emacs, it might be something to look into. Um, but I think the learning curve, uh, I mean, comparing it to Vim, I, I think, you know, Vim, of course, Vim is a text editor. Emacs is called a text editor. It's really not, I mean, it's has it does everything but edit text well. Um, but uh, if you can compare Vim to Emacs, Vim is one of those things that you learn and within the first like day or two of you using it, you're like, wow, I feel so stupid for never using this before. Especially if you've like knocked people who use Vim, you're like, wow, I just feel so dumb. Like not using, the, like there's so many things that I can do so much more effectively just by having a very basic knowledge of Vim, okay? Emacs, although I've tried it many times, I've tried to use it, I've never felt like that. Or if I'm eventually gonna get something out of, if I'm gonna, get some maximum gain of productivity from using Emacs, uh, you, you must have to invest a lot of time in it uh, because I've never, uh, you know, I've never been able to do it all the time that I've used. And again, I've had two 
years now to play around with it. Actually, more than that. I used it even before I did that original video. And there's just nothing that is like, I don't know. There was just nothing for me. Um, anyway, that's ho hopefully explains why I don't use Emacs. But also, I think my computing philosophy generally, I don't like new schemes of doing, like, I like things getting simpler and mil minimalist, not, not just because for the meme of minimalism, but because I like things being more bare bones because it's easier to understand everything that's going on. And if I add on, this is also why I don't like containers and these kind of things that, I don't know, this, I just find them big cringe or all this kind of, okay. So recently, maybe I should do a separate video on this. Yeah, I'll, I'll do a separate video on that. But um, anyway, that's, that's why I don't use Emacs. Hopefully that was coherent enough, but anyway, see you guys next time.